Hey y'all, Chris from Key Farm. So this is, I'm gonna go over the boat and I'm gonna show you how I built some things. And we're also gonna flash um, the parts up on the screen and where I got them as we go. But hey, let's talk about the last video a minute. Uh, hey y'all, we felt like kids out there. My friends are, you know, everybody but me was out there was 69 years old plus, so actual kids would probably really enjoy this. So, um, look, it was a lot of fun out there. I'll put that video right here. Is it there? Did it come? Ah, uh, I think it did. I think it did. All right, so check this out. Um, I'm going to start on the top side and then we'll go underneath and hey you people that don't care anything about the electronics part I'm gonna do you a solid um, I'm gonna wait and do the electronics last so if all you care about is the inboard drive system you don't even have to watch the end of the video we take care of you down here at Key Farm um, alright let's get to it alright y'all where I started on this build was with this pulley right here I knew that this pulley had to sit as low in the boat as possible, and I left it about an inch down there. I did add some thicker plywood to the bottom of the boat because the whole boat is built out of this. Oh, by the way, I think you could probably build the boat with just minor carpentry skills, so I'm not going to go over that a whole lot. Just know that you're going to need some fiberglass and resin. And don't get the pint. Get the whole gallon. It's like 38 bucks at Lowe's. You'll thank me later. It's awesome. You can do anything with it. All right, continuing on. All right, so I decided that, look, that we're in water. We're not trying to propel a go-kart or anything. So the fact that we got almost one-to-one -one here, I mean, this one is a little bit bigger there. So we got a little bit of a mechanical advantage there, but it doesn't really matter because all we're turning is a problem. All right, so... We go from there, of course it's got a key in it, you see that key right there. Um, then we go to a three-quarter jack shaft, and we got our two bearings there. These bolts go all the way through to the bottom of the boat, and they have fiberglass resin on them to seal them. They come up through the plywood, through the two-before, onto here. And I'll get to why all this wood is here in a moment. Alright, so then we go to this steering shaft. I'll put you a picture of it up there, but now I did find one that would probably be better, but we're going to use this one until the bearings come out of it, and they may never come out, so. Um, that is just a stainless steel 3 16 bolt. Okay, so this was 3 quarter bore on both sides. So this is a 3 quarter shaft, 3 quarter bearings, everything matches up. Well, then we had to go to a 5 8 shaft, because that's what I wanted to use going out. So there is a small adapter there. Um, I'll put a picture of the adapter up. I showed it to you in the concept video. All right, then we swap to a 5 8 bearing. And like I said, I always buy them four at a time because they're cheaper that way. And you know, I plan on doing projects as long as y'all keep watching videos. All right, so you see that turning right there? Um, I did put a little bit of some kind of sealant glue there against that uh, shaft and that bearing right there. Um, there again, this, it had to have a little bit of extra wood there just to get the geometry right. There again, these 3 8 bolts go all the way through the bottom of the boat. All right, this uh, glueless union coupler, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, I went to vid uh, uh, Lowe's and I took a video for y'all. So off in the corner, I'm going to see if I can play that video and you'll see how that thing comes apart. Anyway, it's got a, a rubber uh, gasket in there and it all tightens down. And that's pretty much what this is doing. Now, I cut a substantial hole in the boat. But once I got my pipe in there into the strut on the bottom and everything was like I liked it, I used a substantial amount of fiberglass and resin to seal up my hole. You see where I even put this block on the back to hold that. I mean, this is this is very, very thick and resin, and that stuff is it's fantastic is what it is. All right, let's go around the bottom side of the boat. You see where that resin has run down? Doesn't really matter as long as it's sealing holes when it's running through. That's where I put a lot on the top side, and it found a hole, and it sealed it. You see the little pieces of plywood that I put to help seal my substantial hole? And a lot of fiberglass and a lot of resin. 
and the boat will be faster when I get all of this cleaned up on the bottom side. Okay, let's, we gotta look down inside this prop. Well, first the uh, strut. You see that brass bushing right there? That's a 5 eighths brass bushing inside of a piece of pipe and I crushed the piece of pipe to make the bushing fit in there tight. And then I made these little things here so the bushing can't come out. Little notch on the top side, little notch on the bottom side. The bushing can't come out. And then once I got the geometry right, um, anyway, this strut was real long. I cut it in half. I put the T part up there, put that on the shaft, got everything like I wanted it, clamped it together with vice grips, drilled a hole, put a quarter inch bolt in it, and that, that, I mean, it's, it's, what can I say? It just works good. All right, this little old prop, you can see it best right there. It's got a roll pin through it. I had to I had to put that roll pin in there. Now this prop I've had for a long, long time, but there are very, very similar ones on eBay. You may have to bore a 5 8 hole through the center of them. I'm, I got several of them ordered. We're gonna experiment on the next project with different props, but I can't even tell you where this one came from because I simply don't know I've had it so long. And then um, you got a Carter key right there. And just for good measure, I put a 5 8 collar on the back to keep everything from moving. And it does pretty good. All right, y'all. We gotta go back up here and talk engine play. Oh, by the way, this is just a simple centrifugal clutch, but instead of teeth, it drives the V-belt. And as long as you keep it dry, it does pretty good. All right, um, all of this wood is just to build the motor up high enough and to make the boat solid enough you see how over there it's got fiberglass resin. Over here it's got fiberglass and resin. Got three and a half inch screws run in. This boat is made out of such thin stuff. I had to get enough wood under it and get it secured different ways that it wasn't going to just tear the boat apart the first time it tried to torque sideways. So what I did is I made this quarter inch engine plate. And I welded studs to it. So the motor is on studs. The motor and the plate are one piece now. And I put these slots in here. I had it pretty close with this 21 inch belt. But if the motor needs to move side to side to tension the belt a little more, it can. And that is why that's built like that. Keep in mind, that's two three eighths holes drilled and everything between them ground out. Eh, that's just how we do things here. All right, y'all. Now we are moving on to the rudder. Now, all right, so here's the rudder. Um, we just got a 5 8 bar on two pillow block bearings because they're very, very cheap and very, very effective. That piece of sheet metal goes down about halfway of the prop, and it worked pretty good. And then... Look, if you're putting this on a boat or a canoe, from here up is where you'll have to fabricate it yourself. But, if you're going electronics like I did, let me turn these on. Alright, these are, I think these servos are, well, I don't know, I don't remember how much they were, but they not too bad, but not too good either. Um, but they are 25 kilogram servos, I think. Or one of them's a 25 and one of them's a 20. Anyway, this is just a half inch piece of round stock that um, I worked on with my grinder. Made it fit over that servo horn. Put a pin through it. Did the same thing over here. And this servo does what it needs to do. And that's enough to turn the boat. That's all I ask it to do, and that's all it does. And it does it fast enough. And we didn't have any failures the other day. There's my little receiver in there. All right. The throttle is set up exactly like it was on the tractor. It's a piece of 256 rod run back there to the throttle. I can pull it a little bit, I can let off, pull it a little bit, Let's see if I can, or you
can pull it wide open. Very, very simple. Does everything it needs to do. Hey y'all. So I'm Chris from Key Farm. That is my radio controlled predator powered. Wow, that's got a long name. Let's call it the, the lake predator. The river predator. The pond predator. I don't know. Comment down below whatever you think. Hey uh all I can say it was a lot of fun in the drive system. I'm going to try to make it useful in something in the future. It may not always be in this boat. It may move to something else or may get all new parts and leave this one like it is. I don't know. Hey, the sky's the limit as long as y'all keep watching videos. Hey, I'm Chris from Key Farm. Love God. Love people. And speaking of videos, hey, there's one. Oh, there's another. Please don't stop watching. Bye. <laughs>